Topic number two. We can't be examples for the nations without Messiah Yeshua. So that's, I spoke already. He's the only one that can make us keep, keep God's law and its commandments in the proper and acceptable way, which is called Kavanah. Now, I have some questions to us, and I include myself in the category that are supposed to answer those questions. Because I'm also responsible. First question. How Messianic Judaism as a movement has influenced the Christian Gentile world around us? We should answer this question, you know. We all are very proud that after 2,000 years, the Jewish believers in Yeshua rise up again. And we say that we are more than one million Jewish believers today. We, there are more Jewish believers today than in the days of Yeshua himself. And it's a blessing. It's a very good thing. But how are we fulfilling our mission as Jews? It doesn't matter if the Jew is messianic or not. He has a mission just to be Jewish. There is a mission there to be a blessing to the nations of the earth, to be a blessing to the families of the earth. It doesn't care if you're messianic or not. Messianic Jew has even a, a, a double responsibility because he is unable, because he has the law inside, written in his heart, he is unable to bless the nations and to be a light to the nations. What are we doing? What are we doing? You know, that's a, that's a major point in, in our ministry, in teaching from Zion. Because we take upon ourselves this responsibility. We are responsible for the people of God. First of all, we are responsible for each other. You know, everybody is responsible for everybody. That's a principle in Israel, and that's a principle for the people of God. One is responsible for the other one. And we Messianic Jews, and I speak to other Messianic Jews now, we are responsible for the Gentile world, Christian world, the Gentile church. We are responsible for them. You know why? First, because we have this mission as Jews. Second, because if you analyze the, the, the pattern that was established in the first century, Jewish believers of Yeshua in Jerusalem, full of the Holy Spirit, they were the ones taking care of all the communities around the world that Paul was, 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 was planting. And from Jerusalem, they were administrating, they were taking care of these uh, churches, of these communities. They worried about them, you know. If they were teaching, if they had leaders there teaching something against the doctrine of, of the apostles, they sent people there to rebuild, to fight these oppositions. They complement these churches, you know. They took care of them. They took responsibility over them. And that's what we need to do today. We as Messianic Jews, we should take this responsibility again upon our shoulders. Once again, because that's our mission. That's biblical. We should worry about them. It doesn't matter if they don't accept us. It's normal. We are used to that. <laughs> Jews are used to rejection. It's no problem. Nothing new under the sun. Even if they don't recognize our position, even if they don't want to listen to us, we need to take responsibility once again. We can't live our lives inside our own synagogues ignorance of what is going on outside we can't we cannot worry only about our jewish brothers and sisters we can't a messianic synagogue should be a place for non-jewish and jewish believers we cannot segregate I mean, I can't, I can't really, I can't grasp the idea of a messianic synagogue rejecting a Gentile visitor. And it exists. Unfortunately, it exists such a thing. Both in Brazil and in the States. But not in Israel. But it happens. Well, we don't accept uh, non-Jewish believers here. What does it mean? There's no sense. 
If Israel is supposed to be a light to the nations, this light attracts people. The light attracts people because people see the light from far. And they want to go there. They want to know what's going on. They want to, you know, drink from that fountain. They want to be close to the light. So we should not reject our Gentile brothers and we should help them. We should take upon ourselves this responsibility to teach and to help them. And you know what? We need them. We need them, folks. We need the church. The Messianic Jews need the church. I know, I don't know any Messianic Jewish work, successful Messianic Jewish work, that doesn't work with Gentiles, believers, with uh, non-Jewish believers. All the, 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 the prospered and, 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 and successful Messianic Jewish ministers that I know of, they have, a, they, 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 they have a responsibility towards the church. And they work according to that responsibility. Here in, in, in the teacher from Zion, in, in, in our ministry, we, have, we, we take this very seriously. First, our synagogue is opened. We adapted our liturgy so that people that are not used to Hebrew terminology can follow up. They can pray with us. We don't require them to wear talit or kippah. They're, they're, they're free to come. They're free to come and they're free to worship with us. And we welcome them to come. We have uh, conferences for Christian leaders that want to know. You see, I know that there are some leaders that they, don't, they do not want to know anything about Israel, anything with Jewish believers. They, they don't care. But I know a greater number of honest Christian leaders that they want to reconnect to the people of Israel. They fill this gap, and they want to fill up this gap. They want to get closer to Israel. They feel that something is wrong. They feel that the church needs to be closer again with Israel. And what will they do? Would they get closer to the uh, non-Messianic community? Do you think they will be able to get closer to the non-Messianic community? Sometimes they are. And it's a tragedy. In this desire to get closer to Israel, they end up going to synagogues and, and you know, getting closer to some of the rabbis. And many of them, ending, they end up converting to, converting to Judaism. So we as Messianic Jews, we should offer ourselves to be this bridge. We should, you know, have our hands open to them. And we should welcome them. And we should take responsibility over them once again. And we need them. Because the, 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 the kahal, the, the, the congregation of God, is one people only. Jews and non-Jews. There's no church only with Jews. Such a church doesn't exist. We need, we need, to, be, we need to have the other part too. Okay. Another question. What have we done to bless, teach, and instruct those who are the reason of our existence as chosen people? You know. So we need to worry about that. You see, when I, when I watch TV, especially Christian TV shows, and I see terrible things, and especially in Brazil. Brazilians that are watching me now can identify with what I'm speaking now. It's terrible. I mean, things are really going wild. But when I see that, I feel guilty the same way. Because it's my responsibility. I see group of Christians trying to reconnect to Israel, but in a very weird way. Weird. You know, 
some of them, you know, and, and, and sometimes out of a, a good desire, but they end up doing weird things. You know, they think that wearing a, a, a talit or kippah is reconnecting to, to God's people, or they think that, you know, uh, uh, having replicas of the uh, Ark of the Covenant in their houses, that's what God wants uh, for this reconnection to the people of Israel. And it's not. What is lacking the most is, is, is knowledge, is, is, is teaching. What is lacking the most is how to interpret the Bible in its proper Jewish historical context. That's what they need to learn. And that's what we have to, to, to give to them. You see? So we need to, we need to be available. That's, that's my point. We, need to be, we as Messianic Jews, we need to be available. We need to make ourselves available for the Christian church. Even if they don't think that they need us, but they need us more than they realize. Because God will, God, God will uh, require that from us. Another question. How are we influencing our, uh, our Jewish world? That's another problem. How is Messianic Judaism... How is it being seen by our Jewish brothers? And it's another problem. You know, I can, I, I can say to you that uh, maybe it's not a very good uh, impression that they're having. And with reason, with good reasons, they're not having a good impression. Because we as Messianic Jews are not giving the proper testimony. We need to be faithful to God, to who we are. We need to be faithful to the traditions God gave us as a people. I mean the Jewish people. We should be proud of such traditions. You know. And we, we should have Yeshua as the one that makes us better Jews. Not the... Uh, a worse Jew. Yeshua should make us a better Jew. That's a good testimony from the outside. That's the kind of testimony we should have with the Jewish community. We should, we should worry about that. You know, to be good Jews. To be proud of our heritage. You know, not to import from the Christian world all the uh, dogmas, anti-Semitic dogmas and teachings that the church developed over 2,000 years. That we should not be proud of. We should reject that, as a matter of fact. We should reject that. We should not take everything from Christianity, everything that was developed against Israel. We should not, con we should not continue to, to, to teach these things. You know? We should learn from the wisdom of our people. That's another thing. You know? Like the, the, the books of Judaism, such the Talmud especially, you know, the Mishnah. They're good books. They're not canonical. I mean, I'm not, you know, they're not part of my Bible or anything, but they're good books. There are a lot of things there that can be used that teach the, teach the Jew how a Jew thinks, how, how was the Jewish thought in the, in 2,000 years ago. And it's very important. If you want to understand the New Testament in its original context, you need to understand how the Jewish world functioned in those days. It's very important. And the Talmud was, the Mishnah was written in those days. So, of course, we need to study this material with critical uh, eyes. But I think it's a good thing to study them. You know, we need to have, we, <laughs> we need to have uh, knowledge when we talk to our Jewish people, Jewish friends, Jewish brothers and sisters. We need to have knowledge of our own heritage as a people, you see? And there are a lot of good people, uh, good uh, uh, things in, in the Talmud as well. And you know what? There's a lot of uh, glimpses about Yeshua as well in the Talmud. Because religious people that were believers in Yeshua and they participated in the writing of the Talmud, they 
left their fingerprint there. Secret mode. But it's there. It's there to be studied. It's there to be found. But it's there. There's a series of teachings from uh, Rabbi Joseph Shulam, our co-founder in Israel, and it's called the Yeshua and the Talmud. It's a fascinating study. Fascinating study. Because he analyzes all these glimpses that disciples of Yeshua left in the Talmud to be found and to be discovered uh, in future days. And it's amazing. So it's a very good material, and I encourage you to study them, but with, you know, critical spirit. Well, let's uh, summarize. Topic number three, the authentic Messianic Jewish movement has in itself the key to make Israel and the nations fulfill their destiny. We have the most important thing. We have Yeshua HaMashiach and the recognition of the roots of our faith. Friends, I believe Messianic Jews are a bridge. We are a bridge. We are a source of connection. We exist to connect, or better saying, to reconnect. What we should reconnect? We should reconnect Israel to her Messiah. You know that we should reconnect. We should bring Yeshua back home. He spent too much time away with the Gentiles. It's time to bring him home. He spent too much time in Rome. It's time to bring him home to Jerusalem, to Israel. It's time to, it's, it's time to bring his teachings back home. Back to their original context. It's time to bring his disciples' teachings back home. They spend too much time abroad. So Messianic Jews, they have this responsibility to take Yeshua back to our people. To show Yeshua not dressed up like a Roman priest or as a Greek philosopher or as a blonde Hollywood actor. Because this is very weird. It's the image of Yeshua that the West have. That's why Yeshua is very strange to his own people because they portrayed a Yeshua that is very strange to his own people. Yeshua came from the Middle East. He was born in Israel. But if you see the movies, you see uh, Jesus, Yeshua, that is blonde, you know, blue eyes. And not against blue eyes. Not, I don't have anything against blue eyes. But if you, portray, you, have, if you have that portrait of Yeshua, you're... you're, you're taking him far from his own people, but people were not recognizing him as a Jew, you know. I used to say that in, where I worked in, um, when I went to, um, to the cemetery, seminary, in, uh, in, 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 when I went to seminary, I, uh, I, I <laughs> there was a, a, a painting of Jesus in the place I used to work, in the room I used to work. I was a graphic designer. And I, <laughs> every day I was entering that room, I was looking at that picture, and, and I named it uh, the Kevin Costner Jesus. You know, back in those days, Brad Pitt was not really, you know, famous. But Kevin Costner was like, you know, a very famous, popular actor. So I used to call it the, the Kevin Costner Jesus. Blonde, you know, hair, very straight hair, blonde hair, blue eyes, you know. Nothing Jewish about him. You know, how my people would recognize, would connect. There is no connection. So we should dress Yeshua back as a Jew. He's a Jew. He never left being Jewish. He is still a Jew. Circumcised in the eighth day. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. And will come back as a Jew. As king of the Jews. Amen. So that's our mission, to be a bridge. What else should we reconnect? We should reconnect the church to its Jewish roots. That's what we need to do. That's our obligation. That's our mission. Because they need it. The church will not 
fulfill its destiny without reconnecting to its Jewish and biblical roots. The days we're living now, they demand this reconnection. The church will not be able to fight the fight, the battle, without this reconnection. Reconnection. The, the church needs this reconnection. And Messianic Jews, the Messianic Jewish movement is the one that exists to, um, that exists to make this reconnection possible.